Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. It feels these days you can't use a torque wrench on social media, heck, in front of your coworker standing around without being told you're using it wrong. You can't use extensions. You can't use a flex head at a flex angle. You can't use anti-seize or crow's foot or torque adapters this way. You can't hold a torque wrench here or there. You can't cheap out on a torque wrench. You have to leave the thing reset to zero before putting it away. All that and more craziness. Today we're going to test 10 torque myths because some of those are true and some are just made up nonsense to put this all to bed. Well, who am I kidding? It's probably still gonna be a bloodbath in the comments, but hey, we have the equipment, so let's take a look. Sure, to test torque wrench accuracy, we can do that, but more to our curiosity, compare the effects these myths have on the tightness of a bolt. Our dyno measures bolt tension, and it's pretty sensitive at that. This will tell us if what you're doing on the wrench end has any effect on the resulting bolt tension engineers are often after when designing a car. We have quite a few torque wrenches from a lot of brands around here and price points from $19 near to a thousand, quarter inch to three quarter inch, Amazon and Harbor Freight to Matco, Armstrong and Snap-on, we use these a lot, so let's see if we've been using them all wrong. Disclaimer, this will all be in pounds foot, so if you live in the Newton meters world, this all still applies the same. The numbers are, after all, for the sake of comparable measurements. Just looking for big changes versus no changes. All right, and starting us out with myth number one, you need an expensive torque wrench. Now, between all the torque wrenches I use daily, there are benefits to more expensive and well better torque wrenches. For example, modern digital torque wrenches like this Matco Tools 3 8 give you a live display of the torque value as it climbs, with an audible and visual color indication of when you're near and hit your desired torque. And then the flashing readout of the torque you actually hit is an often used nice touch as well. And this calibration instrument that's rated up to three times more accurate than the wrench seems to agree with its readings. And so does our dyno agree with the actual resulting tightness of the fastener. But yeah, these are around 600 bucks. And this is my trusty eight year old $19 Harbor Freight torque wrench. Let's see how it does. With 80 as a target, it hits 81.2 to 78.9. And yeah, 78 on our dyno as well. Adjusting this just five foot pounds down to see if the resolution is worth anything. We see 75 as expected on our dyno in 73.8. 73.5, 72.7. Yeah, a nice thing about clickers is they break at that torque level here and don't go over it like digital torque wrenches can. Now, if you wanna go over the exact percentage difference between new versus use a lot, torque cycled, we recommend the channel Tools Tested, which is great for this sort of thing and more. But overall, we've not seen a ton of evidence across many years doing this sort of thing on our dyno and otherwise that price equals accuracy. We find price equals features and warranty. Having a wrench that will give you pounds foot, then switch to newton meters, then switch to degrees of rotation for torque to yield bolts is amazing sometimes, and I found some digital examples on the money saver end of things to be annoying and downright hardware threatening at times. So that leaves very pricey options that come with friendly warranties and calibration. But if you need just repeatable accuracy these days, big names from the cheap end like Harbor Freight just work. Where I find again and again a good quality to dollar example is Tecton and their quarter to half inch torque wrenches on Amazon, just good. And in an homage to the beloved Mythbusters, we're going to call this myth that price equals accuracy busted. Now speaking of calibration that I was talking about just briefly there, well another myth we wanted to investigate is leaving your click type torque wrench twisted up high without resetting it and seeing what it does when it's just sitting at that level for a long time, which is why this initial footage we've been showing you was shot six months ago We'll open her up later on in this episode to see how she's doing. All right, myth number two, when you press down on a torque wrench, it matters where you're pressing down. The idea being that if you aren't pressing down from the handle or even the center of that handle, the accuracy goes out the window. Here's a split beam torque wrench. These are nice because you don't have to turn the handle micrometer style to adjust the torque. You just adjust this dial face, which is quick, and you can reportedly leave it this way without resetting, unlike other wrenches, which we'll be taking a look at. This one we had calibrated last month, and when set to 150, it's seeing 151, 152.1, 149.4, 149.7. Yeah, good stuff. Let's check things out. When set to 75 on our dyno, the bolt gets 75 worth of tight. By choking up on it and turning it near the midsection instead of the handle, we see 
80 foot pounds. Not a huge change, but some difference. We also see this on clicker style traditional micrometer torque wrenches when we tested this Pittsburgh six months ago. 73.8 foot pounds when dialed to 75. Choking up on it, we see 79.6. This can be done the opposite direction, even though it may seem counterintuitive, by adding an extension on the wrench. And now we're reading low, 64 to 65 foot-pounds. So where we didn't find this to be true was on digital torque wrenches. This is because clicker torque wrenches are actually measuring, well, are simply calibrated to the resistance on a breakaway point of a pivot mechanism attached to a shaft, and not so much the square drive and socket end that what you're focused on. Seems counterintuitive, but the math checks out. We'll leave a link to this from a bike sauce video that made a lot of sense after we saw our findings. Myth confirmed, use your torque wrench from the mid handle, at least for clickers, but probably not a bad practice to implement in general either. Okay, and myth number three, crow's foot or torque adapter attachments don't work or aren't accurate or you can't use it like that. Let's find out. This is an Aries 19 millimeter torque adapter because we have a dual drive test bolt with a 19 millimeter male hex we can use. And it's 3 8 drive and you can plop it into a torque wrench to get things a straight shot with a torque wrench cannot. Think like injectors deep into an intake manifold behind a fuel rail or brake caliper bolts without room around that knuckle for a torque wrench. They sort of look silly until you need one and then they make sense. Let's check it out. So when set to 100, we're instead getting 117 from a 101 reading. But if I'm being honest, that was expected and we'll dive into why. What I didn't expect was what happens when you use an adapter at a 90 degree angle. When you are careful to set it up just in such a way, a 100.9 reading registers as 101 and 101.1 .1 here as 102, looking pretty spot on. This isn't something I knew and apparently it's very much a thing. You see, adding a torque adapter extension adds to the acting lever arm of the torque wrench. In this case, our adapter is two inches from center to center drive ends. The torque wrench, in our case, is 14 inches long. Well, it's longer overall, but when you measure from the center of the handle to the center of the drive end, like from myth number two we covered, we're looking at 14 inches. So we're working with a 16 inch lever when you total those two things together, when the display on the tool is expecting 14 inches. This is a simple and well-known formula. You basically multiply your intended torque value by wrench length, then divide by your new working length. So 14 times 100 up top here, divided by 16, we should get 87.5. We should be dialing this thing to 87.5 to get 100, which is why the reading is higher. It's reading 117 here, which the formula says should be 102, and the wrench is saying 101. Checks out. And 115 here, math says the wrench should be reading 100.6, and it's saying 100.8 looking very clean. Now me feeling like a real smart guy knowing this formula, I often used it rather blindly. But as it turns out, using the adapter at a right angle adds zero length from center to center handle, which results as we found here, there being no change and the torque wrench remaining accurate. This applies at a 45 degree angle, adding an inch and a half or so, or anywhere in between using the effective new length of the lever. And backwards too, as we found out, pretty cool, this 102 reading resulting in 96 foot pounds, shorter effective lever, lower result now. Now we are talking sort of peanuts on this short torque adapter, but the longer the adapter or higher the torque spec you're aiming for, the foot pounds do start to add up. It's sort of the phenomenon that makes sense on paper, but until you see it, well, it was cool to be able to get a clear picture in person of these changes. We're gonna call this myth that they aren't accurate or can't be used at certain angles busted. They are and can be accurate. You just sort of have some homework on your hands to do to ensure that they are. Myth number four is a short one, thank goodness. Can you do the same thing with a wrench wrench? That way you have the option of an open end, sort of like an extended crow foot wrench, or just a longer torque adapter, really. We've gotten the question more than once on the basis of it just looking pretty silly, and the short answer is yes. Yes, you can. Using an adjustable torque wrench adapter, we'll leave links below, as long as you clock the length into something nominal to make your life easier with the math, this also checks out. Despite looking like it wouldn't, this six inch long extension makes 144 foot pounds when met with 101.2 of torque wrenching action. Math says it should be 101.5. It gets around that each time we test it, yeah, happy with that. Same principles, using it at an angle lessens that accordingly based on the new effective length. And using it at a right angle, which I'd recommend for the math adverse, pretty much brings you back to the torque wrench spec 
good stuff. Myth number five, using a flex head torque wrench is less accurate or the more you angle a flex head, the less accurate it becomes. Well, my thought on this sort of thing has always been, well, if the people designing the tools don't want you to be using a flex head at an angle, why is it there? But also admittedly not something I've looked into. This flex head split beam torque wrench is measuring 149.7, 149.8 or so on a 150 setting. With the arm angled all the way out, that's 147.4, and with the arm flexed all the way in, it's 150.1. Yeah, 148.1 now. We're talking within 1.5% accuracy, still well within spec. This one, as it turns out, is rather simple. As long as the head of the tool is perpendicular to the fastener, things remain accurate. What changes is your amount of input effort at the wrench to hit that torque level. As you swing away, you're afforded less leverage and have to press down harder for the same output. But the output remains unchanged as long as that drive is aligned with the fastener threads. Myth busted, flex away. But what if we sort of just get a bit crazy with attachments, extensions, heck, over six feet of extensions stacked onto each other, square drive size adapters, universal swivels, let's do it. Myth number six, that extensions and attachments can ruin your target torque. Now we've done this before, but with impact wrenches and found a pretty massive difference as you extend the length or number of extensions on top of each other, massive losses. But what about a torque wrench? So we stacked 10 extensions end to end to find out, and with the setting of 75 foot-pounds, we get 74 foot-pounds from a 76.9 foot-pound reading. This continually showed little to no difference, but what if we adapt like a 3 8 torque wrench to half-inch extensions down to 3 8 then half-inch again, then to a universal socket? Basically what looks like a horrible idea. Well, you get 79 to 80 foot-pounds from a 78.7 reading. Yeah. Nada. No difference, really. This is because while a lot of people took away from our videos on universals and extensions that they are torque thieves, and that is true, that's because here they are inefficient at transferring sudden impulses. Each individual impact blow has to be transferred down the length of many joints on your attachment, then it resets and tries with another blow. Using these tools by hand soaks up all of those joint and material twisting tolerances, so you might be rotating the wrench more overall, but the final result is the same. That is, unless one attachment is weak enough to start yielding and deforming, like if a quarter inch square drive adapter was used here, but you also have to do well to support those extensions and keep them in line with the fastener, and that's because when used at an angle, like with a universal here, 79 foot-pounds becomes 72. Or when used at a max angle of this universal, 82 foot-pounds becomes 72 foot-pounds. More and more loss the steeper the angle of approach. So in general, like the flex head rule, keep the tool's head perpendicular and drive aligned with the fastener and you're always going to be good. Myth about extensions ruining torque, bust it. Myth number seven, and we're here. It's been six months of our cheap Harbor Freight Pittsburgh clip torque wrench left at its highest setting. Dialing it down a little now to 75 foot pounds, and it's reading, instead of 75, 61 and a half, 61.9 and 62.2. And on our dyno, 64 foot pounds. Not pretty, it went from being one and a half to 2% off to being 16 to 18% off. This is because inside of a micrometer style clicker torque wrench is a spring. That spring sets the tension on the pin and bearing that slips and clicks out of place. When left at full tension for a length of time, that spring can form a memory, one that's naturally in a more compressed state than it's designed for. The spring now being less springy means less tension on the bearing and pin and sooner to slip out of place, replicating you having it in a lower setting. I mean, I can only tell you this happens because we tried it out. I thought it might be like an old wives tale. One of the reasons choosing a split beam style clicker is nice is because you can just throw it back into the case at a lug nut torquing spec and may not even have to adjust it when using it next. We did try the same process after one month and found little to no difference however, so keep a one to six month window in mind. Myth number eight, crescent torque wrenches are basically adjustable torque wrenches are whack. So we bought the best selling model on Amazon this Vanpo, which was about 100 bucks, and is a 20 to 160 foot pound model. What's cool about this is it's both a traditional torque wrench and an adjustable wrench torque wrench all in one, with ball detent quick change heads that snap in rather nicely. The purpose of the wrench end is similar to like crow feet, 
Imagine a hydraulic line that needs to be torqued to a certain level or anything you can only get to one side on instead of fitting a socket over it. And the micrometer adjustment on this wrench is rather nice as well. The release style collar we also find on a lot of higher dollar and USA examples and it clicks into place at certain torque levels. Pleasantly surprised with this one, let's test it out. The standard head attachment gives us a chance to sort of A-B test this thing and it's making 103, 104, yeah, 103 foot-pounds at its 100 detent setting, 99 foot-pounds, 97 to 98, and 101. A bit more range than the others we tested, but right in there. With the crescent wrench end on, we can tackle the one and a half inch hex portion of this test bolt without finding a specific socket, and it looks to be tightening to 113 foot-pounds, 108 foot-pounds, 110 foot-pounds, but we were using the 19 millimeter hex portion on this bolt before, so maybe that's making the difference somehow. Nope, 112 foot pounds. Shouldn't be a difference, so that tracks, I guess. So what's going on with this tool? Well, the adjustable wrench head is longer than the square drive head, and they obviously calibrated the tool to the square drive end head because that's accurate for the most part. So adding this end to it, you're effectively adding a torque adapter and changing the lever length, which we covered in Myth 3, no bueno. Not very smart. They needed to use either a shorter wrench head or a tool that's only calibrated to the wrench end like these types are. Or you can do that math yourself on the measurement difference. But this one was showing some wear on the jaws just from 100 to 112 foot pounds. So I'd say look at other options. Not our favorite as it turns out going to call this myth plausible. It's possible, but now you know what to look out for. Myth number nine, and this is one of our favorites, you can't use anti-seize on threads. Well, you can't without screwing up your target torque. Now, people and auto techs alike employ the silver glitter bomb of the repair world, often on threads. Besides falling you home on your hands and your elbows like a bank robber's die pack, this stuff helps prevent fasteners from basically rust welding themselves together so you can remove it easily next time you're working on it. And this bolt is operating as a stand-in for M14 threads because some folks like to apply anti-seize to wheel studs in rust belt states. But what's that gonna do to torque values then? Well, now calibrated for a broken in by hand, but not abused M14 lug stud, the dyno is showing 100 to 102 foot-pounds on a 101.5 foot-pound reading, looking good. Now, without turning the camera off, we take that same bolt out, slather it in the good stuff on the threads where the nut was engaged. The torque wrench hasn't even been turned off at this point, and right back onto the dyno, it's downright trying to murder this fastener. 196 foot-pounds worth of tight with a 101 input. And this is one of the reasons we wanted to use a bolt tension dyno to see how actually tight the resulting bolt is each time, as people often assume torque is just torque, it beeped for me, so it must be 100. And I knew it would be higher, but double? Yeah, we're seeing 208 foot-pounds here. This is because of K-factor in a bolt tension formula. A good portion of input torque becoming output bolt tightening is bolt condition. And the majority of effort in on your behalf is resulting in friction on any bolted joint. And anti-seize, while not a lubricant strictly, does lubricate, resulting in more turning of the threads to make the same resistance on your wrench and for the tool to go beep or click. So myth confirmed, it's a big difference, a much larger of one than we expected. Don't use 50% as a rule, it can easily be all over the place on this thing, so either avoid anti-seize or use the line marking method on a wheel when the threads are dry, then lubricated to make sure you're not over torquing. Myth number 10, you need to send out your torque wrench to be calibrated for it to be accurate. Well, the oldest wrench of the bunch today, and cheapest, while slightly wider in readings than others, it was within spec. But as we've shown, getting out of spec is certainly a possibility, including with digital torque wrenches if you go beyond their measurement range while using them. So method one is an easy way to check this without paying to ship it out and have some repair center do it. It's with a cheap digital luggage scale or force meter if you have one, which is what we did here when recalibrating our own now out of whack Harbor Freight torque wrench. Make a measurement such as 12 inches away to this point on the handle here to make pounds foot easy to follow along with in the math, but you can do it with any length, for example, 18 inches and divide by one and a half, but essentially a 50 foot pound setting is now after some adjustment showing 49 on our dyno and 49.4 pounds on the force meter. And 50 foot pounds is showing 51 pounds on our force meter. You're looking to be within two to 3% or so, which 
we're well within now. Mini torque wrenches calibration can be adjusted at home, like these Pittsburgh ones, you can often just look up the process. And method two is even easier. A digital torque adapter also works for this same process and sometimes can be found rather cheap as well. Dial in the wrench until that reading matches. Now I'm sure we left out some of your own burning questions, though we tried to cover all the ones we commonly get asked. Head down to the comments if you want to and perhaps others will provide some insight. We make episodes every Friday, click subscribe to see those in your feed sometimes, and thanks for watching.